Hello and welcome to a new episode of Dota Basics. We'll be covering items in this episode, but first let's start off with how to buy your first items. Purchasing items is pretty simple. First you need enough gold to buy the item you're interested in. Once you have that, simply open the shop and right click with your mouse on the item you want and it's purchased. There's two types of items in Dota 2 shops, and that's basic items and upgraded items. For example, if I want an item that's ready for brushing my teeth, I want a toothbrush that already has toothpaste on it. But if I want to buy the basic item parts of that, I'd have to first purchase a toothbrush, and I'd have to purchase a small amount of toothpaste. Dota items work the same way, just sometimes there's other items combined on the path to a finished item. Some items even take a basic item, an upgraded item, and a unique recipe to finish the best version of that item. So when purchasing items, you can purchase the basic items individually, purchase the upgraded parts, or just purchase the full item if you have all of that gold ready. The shop will do it automatically for you. Remember, to combine an item, all of the parts have to either be on your hero or all on a courier. If they're on your hero, it doesn't matter if they're in your backpack or your inventory for the item to complete. Just keep in mind that you can't grab items from base unless you're in the fountain to put them on your hero, or unless you bring them out to you using the courier as a delivery system. All right, so you've loaded into a game, what do you buy? If you're new to the genre, it might be tempting to save for one of the best and most expensive items in the game as your first item, but that's not going to pay off. That's because expensive items are very slot efficient. That means they only take one item slot despite giving you tons of benefits, but they're very expensive for what they give you. If we compare one of the most expensive basic items in the game, Eagle Song, to a Slippers of Agility, you'll see that Slippers has a cost of 50 gold per agility that it gives you, while the Eagle Song costs 128 gold per agility. You can only fit up to 6 Slippers in your inventory, of course, but Eagle Song is so much more expensive that it won't be worth it until later in the game. As a general principle, you're better off buying cheap items in the very early game, than slowly upgrading or replacing them when you start running out of item slots. We've been talking about agility items, which are good on some heroes, but something all heroes need in the early game is HP regen, or health point regen. HP regen items are important because they allow you to heal damage taken, and stay in lane for longer while getting last hits and collecting experience. Let's use a healing salve as our example. If you're low on HP in lane like this, you could either go all the way back to the base, then purchase a TP scroll to teleport back to lane, or you could start the game with a salve and heal yourself quickly out of combat after you take damage. While most early game HP regen items are consumable, meaning that you use them up permanently once you consume them, it's very likely that their low cost will be easily offset by you staying in lane longer or keeping your HP higher than your opponents. Selves are great to get from low HP to high HP in a very short period of time, but be careful not to take damage from enemy heroes, as that will cancel the healing effect. Tango is the other common form of consumable health regen. It comes in a pack, and clicking the hotkey and selecting a tree will cause your hero to run to that tree, destroy it, and that'll provide regen for a bit of time. A pack of tangos will ultimately heal you for more health than a salve, and it can't be interrupted like a salve can, but it won't be able to heal you as rapidly, which is both good and bad. Basically, you should use a tango to slowly heal you over time and keep you close to full health, even if you only take a little bit of damage. Just keep in mind that using another tango before the first duration is up will just reset the timer and waste some of your heal. Try to wait until the timer ends before you chomp down on another tree. Generally, you should try to avoid purchasing these consumable HP regen items later in the game, as at that point there's more expensive items that will heal you better, but with your starting gold, it's recommended that you get at least one or two sets of HP regen, say, one tango and one salve, or two sets of tangos. If you expect to run low on mana in the early game, but you don't want to run to the fountain, you can purchase something like Clarity Potions to regenerate your mana faster. These can be interrupted by enemy hero damage, just like salves, so try to save them for when you aren't fighting enemy heroes. If you want mana more rapidly, you can purchase a mango to eat, a bottle maybe, or even a raindrop. Bottles are really interesting because they have three charges, each restoring your health and mana over a bit of time. Once you drink those charges, they're gone, but you can refill the bottle either by going back to your fountain or by picking up runes on the map and storing them. Yes. After you store those runes, you can activate those runes and then drink the charges that have been refilled in your bottle as a result. Bottle is most commonly picked up in the middle lane, as the mid laner is closest to multiple runes and therefore has a lot of opportunities to refill the bottle and get a lot of use out of it. Just keep in mind, bottle charges are only interrupted by player-based damage, so you can use bottle while being attacked by creeps, by towers, and stuff like that. As long as it's not an enemy hero. That covers most of the early game regen items, and now let's talk about the items that you purchase with the rest of your starting gold. If you're playing a mid or carry role, it's pretty common to want a mix of stats, because it's going to help you last hit creeps. That's because when you buy stat items, it increases the amount of damage that your right click does. So that could be something like a Wraith Band if you're an agility hero, because it gives you a lot of agility, or a Null Talisman if you're an intelligence hero. 
You could also consider a Quelling Blade if you're a melee hero instead of stats, because that allows you to deal bonus damage to creeps, not heroes, which makes less hitting much easier. If you're a melee hero and you expect to be pressured by enemy heroes or to be attacked by enemy creeps, a Stout Shield can be a great purchase. It has a chance to block damage when you're attacked, and it works best against lower damage things like creeps. For supports, your first purchases, other than some health regen and maybe a clarity, needs to be an animal courier. There has to be one on every team so you can deliver items later without going back to base. And ideally, you'd also purchase one or two observer wards as well to place on the map for vision purposes so you can track enemy heroes moving around the map and not be surprised by it. As you get used to paying attention to the map, these wards will save your life countless times. The yellow observer wards are naturally invisible, so if you want to destroy enemy wards, you can instead place the blue sentry wards for the true sight they provide. True sight doesn't grant regular vision, but it does let you see nearby invisible things like wards and heroes. So to destroy an enemy observer ward, place a sentry ward where you expect their ward to be, and then attack it until it dies. Another cheap way to see invisible heroes other than sentry ward is dust of appearance. Dust doesn't reveal anything like observer wards that are invisible, and it only lasts for a matter of seconds instead of minutes like a sentry ward, but dust will stick to enemies, so even if you dust somebody and they walk out of range, they will still be visible to you. So if you're trying to chase enemies or catch a hero, dust is much better than a sentry ward. There's a small chance you'll need these detection items at the start of the game if you're against an invisible hero, so keep an eye on the enemy heroes to know which ones you might be up against at the start of the game. If you plan ahead to bring detection to your lane at the start, it could give you a huge advantage against those heroes. Now I mentioned TP scrolls earlier when talking about salves. If you need to return to base, or if you die and want to return to your lane quickly, you can purchase a TP scroll to teleport to any friendly building on the map, including shrines. Teleports will be useful throughout the game, either to get out on the map faster, or to get home to defend buildings under siege. You won't need to purchase them at the start of the game, but if you need to rotate to another lane, a teleport scroll is a great way to accomplish that rather than walking all the way there. Now that we've covered some of the starting items, let's talk about the items you should be looking at as soon as you collect a bit of gold. Magic Stick is a great early game item that gives you HP and MP regen. It's not recommended that you purchase it with your starting gold, but it's often one of the first three items that you purchase after the laning stage begins. Whenever an enemy hero uses a spell nearby, you will gain a charge on your Magic Stick. The charges you have can be used to instantly restore health and mana for each charge it built up. Against spellcasters, it's great to help keep you alive when you're focused, or restore just enough mana to cast another spell. It may be difficult to remember to use the magic stick at first in dangerous moments, but the faster you get used to using stick, the better. Another super important early game item is Boots of Speed. Heroes have very different movement speeds than one another, but being faster than other heroes is a huge advantage, so it's pretty important that you purchase Boots of Speed relatively early on, on virtually every hero in the game. Though most people wear two shoes at a time, you can only get the movement speed benefit of one boot at a time in Dota. Don't buy any more than that. If you still feel too slow, there's other movement increasing items that you can get early in the game like a Windlace. It doesn't make you much faster for the gold cost, but it can sometimes be a starting item as well if you need some extra kick and don't want to spend all of your gold on boots of speed at the start. Oftentimes one of your first item upgrades will be your boots. There are a handful of choices and you'll usually want to upgrade them to make your hero and your skills more effective. Arcane Boots, for example, is a great way to increase your mana pool and provide some MP restore to yourself and allies if you have big mana needs. Power Treads are very versatile boots because they grant attack speed, and they can be toggled to grant 10 of any attribute of your choosing. Red Treads is 10 Strength, Green is 10 Agility, and Blue is 10 Intelligence. Treads can be a bit difficult to master, we'll get back to this later on in the series, but in short, you should have them on Strength when taking damage to increase your HP, they should be on agility when you need attack speed or you're an agility hero, or you'll keep them on intelligence whenever you're using spells because it gives you more mana pool. Or if you really don't want to think about it or press the hotkey to change them during battle, leaving them on strength for the bonus health won't be a bad idea. Next we've got the phase boots which increase the damage your hero deals by attacking, but they also have an active ability which gives you a small speed burst and allows you to phase through units sort of like if you were a ghost. Tranquil Boots are another boot choice, and these ones are cool because they give you a huge movement speed boost and health regen outside of combat. If you attack any unit, or if you're attacked yourself, the regen is disabled and you're just a little bit slower. Outside of attacking though, these boots are incredibly fast in movement speed for the cost, and they help keep you on the map after you fight enemies and take damage. You'll heal up pretty quick. Finally, there's Boots of Travel, which provide the biggest movement speed bonus. These boots have a built-in teleport scroll, which allows you to teleport to any allied creep or building. The cooldown on the TP is significantly smaller than TP scrolls, and it also saves you an item slot, so they sound great, right? They do, but they're also more than twice as expensive as the other boot options. While these boots are undeniably very useful, they don't provide your hero with valuable early game stats like HP 
or attack speed like treads, uh, they don't give you bonus damage like phase, and they have pretty comparable movement speed to tranquil boots for about four times the cost. They are therefore usually considered late game boots except on a handful of heroes who can truly abuse the teleport. For item purchases other than the boot choices, we're not going to be able to cover those here, but generally your best bet is to follow in-game guides, or to copy the item progressions that players better than you use for the heroes that you're interested in. Make sure you watch how they use these items as well, so that you do get the value from purchasing them. Or if you want to struggle or find your own way, then you can buy whatever you want. Just spend some thought on why you purchased that item and consider if it was worth it, or if your gold might have been better spent on a different item that would have kept you alive, helped you kill the enemies, or helped you collect gold and experience more quickly. These two items, Divine Rapier and Gem of True Sight, are two highly cost-effective items. However, they come with a unique disadvantage. If you die, the item drops on the ground. So not only do you lose the item, but enemy heroes will be able to pick them up. You can buy a gem if your team really needs detection for invisible heroes that moves with you, or you can pick up a rapier if you need a huge amount of damage because you feel like you're losing and you need to win the next fight, but generally it's a lot safer to just ignore those items until you understand what they're used for. There's lots of other items in the shop, but that will be a lesson for another time. In the next episode, we'll cover resource types in Dota 2. You guys already know about one of them, it's gold, but there's a handful more, and some of them are pretty easy to overlook, so stay tuned.